Hello and welcome to the DSP project. I'm your host Rupert Brown and this week we're talking about the launch pad again. Now I've already done a video covering some of the basics of how it works but this week we're going to go a little bit deeper and I want to tell you how to get momentary controls as opposed to toggle controls for your pads. Um, the reason is I thought a really good way to test the launch pad would be to see if I can, what's the best kind of uh, beat cutting uh, fun time setup that I can make for it. And uh, I really need momentary controls to do um, what I'm trying to achieve. Now you can get momentary controls using the AutoMap software. Now AutoMap software, if you don't know, is a free piece of software provided by Novation. It works with most of their controllers and the, the main sort of thing for it is that it can automatically map your controls of your controller to the parameters of your plugins. Um, and plus if you make any changes to what's mapped to what knob for instance, AutoMap will remember that and then even if you're in a completely different set, if you bring that plugin up, up again, it will automatically map all the, uh, the knobs back to however you like them. But in this case, I'm just using the AutoMap um, software to change the CC values of a pad from the toggle to the momentary control. Now, everything that I read and watched online told me that essentially I was going to have to make a choice between either using the AutoMap configuration or using the native live configuration, which was a bit of a bummer. I was thinking that in order to just get this, these momentary controls, I was going to have to lose my session view and my mixer and all the cool stuff that, live, that uh, the launchpad does out of the box. But I'm happy to report this isn't actually the case. There is a way that you can use both configurations. You can swap between the two on the fly just using the launchpad. Um, so it's a perfectly viable solution for using live. So how's it done? Let's find out. Okay, so here we have a basic live set. We've got two clips loaded in and uh, an effect, a frequency shifter um, plugin loaded. So, and also a copy of the auto map which is running. Now, the auto map is currently showing as offline because we have the launch pad loaded into live and it's set. Oh, let's pull, pull the, the configuration out here so you can see it. And we have it set to, we've got the launch pad on and uh, set as the control surface, ins and outs, and we've also got auto map MIDI set. So we are now in the, the native launch pad mode. We can see we've got our, I've got our mixer and uh, that's all working fine as you would expect it to. So quickly explaining what I, what I want to do is I want to turn this uh, effect on and off um, and given the current um, the, the the standard setup of uh, live in the launch pad here. Let's, let's delete that mapping. Uh, if I let's say I want to assign it to this key um, and turn MIDI off, one push turns it on, one push turns it off. I want to be able to hold it in and let go and have the effect come off. Right. So and as far as I can see, this is not achievable using the standard um, the standard configuration in live. There's no options in, up here to uh, to change that sort of thing. Um, which I guess it's more the MIDI information. So anyway, how do we now get from our default setup to the auto map configuration? How do we bring that in? Drum roll please. User 2, user 1, down arrow. That brings us, and you'll notice that the um, auto map's now changed around, that brings us into the auto map software and disables the, the standard live native configuration. So we've got four modes up the top here, which, which work kind of similar as the, um, the native ones. We've got session mode, which is called uh, inst, uh, fx, user, and mixer mode. I'm going to use the user mode because it's already got some MIDI data entered in there. Now, by default, mine seems to have uh, set up a configuration for MIDI channel 1 and 2. So I want to use MIDI channel 1. So I hit 1. And now we are in more automat mode, and we've got a bunch here, a bunch of CC values here set to toggle. Um, we've also got pages left and right. If you look up here, it says page one of five. Um, we can use the pages, and you can add as many pages or remove as many pages as you want. So we've got some some note values here, some momentary notes, uh, and uh, some some toggling CC values. So we'll start with here on page one. Now I want to, let's say this, this button in the corner here that's currently uh, a toggle button, I want to change this to a momentary button. 
So I'm going to select this button and it gives us some options. We've got some minimum maximum values, but I'm interested in the mode here and I'm going to change it from toggle to momentary. So now you'll notice that rather than being an on off situation, when I hold it, it lights up, when I let go, it turns off. Exciting, fantastic, exactly what we wanted. So now let's jump back over to live and map that up. So I click into live, select the MIDI map in the top right hand corner, select the on off button, push delete to delete that previous mapping and I now want to map um, my new special momentary button in the corner here. Push it once, live maps it up. Now I'm going to turn MIDI map off. Something I've noticed is when, for some reason, when you turn MIDI map off in live, it seems to reset the launch pad back to the, um, to the native mode. So um, you'll notice if I hit the MIDI button, it flicks over and so we're now, we're now back to, for some, re some reason or other, back to the standard live mode, which is a little bit annoying. I, I want to see if I can figure out a way around that, but uh, for the time being it's fairly easy. We just push the user 2, user 1 and the down arrow and that brings us back to auto map mode and select the user mode. Now you'll notice that we've come back to our option of whether we want the, the channel 1 or channel 2. I'm only want, I only want to use channel 1 so this is like an extra menu that's uh, another click that I don't need so there is a way to get rid of it though. If we select the auto map software again, come to settings and change the number the, the channels here and turn channel 2 off and so now uh, if we go from one of the other modes into the user mode it jumps straight to our, our currently loaded program and so as you can see if I hold down frequency shift it comes on and take it off it goes off exactly uh, exactly what we want fantastic okay so not the most exciting audio demo but you but you get the idea um, and that is it so Basically, that the the, uh, the the main thing to take away from this is the uh, user two, user one, and down mode. So we're we're now capable of having all the all the configuration of the auto map, but yet still using our um, our native mode. So we go session mode. We can launch a launch a track. User two, user one, down arrow, and now we can jump to our effects. Same buttons and jump jump back out again and that's it so that's how I achieved it now I'm hoping this video will help a lot of you guys out I know that this information is not easy to come by at least I, I had a lot of trouble finding it um, and I think that when you combine the cool things the launchpad does natively plus the flexibility of the auto map um, you really it opens up a lot of doors you can add pages and pages of configurations to the the auto map software if you have enjoyed this video, please head down to our website, thedspproject.com, leave us a comment, a question, maybe you can add something to, the, to what's being spoken about here. Uh, I do have a request, if you are going to comment on our videos, that you do it at the DSP website, as opposed to um, the other places where this video is aggregated, like YouTube and things like that. Just because A, we're starting to get double up questions, so your question may have already been answered, and B, some people are, are dropping some um, fantastic little nuggets of information and it would be great to be able to keep those all in one place. Also, if you have enjoyed the video, um, please come down and subscribe um, at the DSP website. Uh, it really does help us out. Essentially, the more subscribers we can get, the better we can make the show. And it's a, it's a free and easy way of supporting us, so that would be fantastic. And also, there will be more Launchpad videos. Um, I'm just getting, just starting to get into it and trying to build this little looping, cutting set idea that I've got in my mind. So if you want to see how this works out, um, do stay tuned. There will be some more advanced Launchpad videos coming. Uh, and finally, you can email me direct inbox at the dspproject.com if you want to talk about anything you know, questions, if you've got even some criticisms, whatever, um, hit me up, I'm always about. That is about all we've got time for today. Join us next time where we will be talking about something else. <laughs>